Good day, we bring you the latest updates from the PA newsroom. The justice sector under the Marcos administration reiterated its call for climate justice and accountability from developed countries. Justice Secretary Crispin Remulia made the call at the regular Universal Periodic Review of the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva, Switzerland. Remulia said developed countries must increase financing for mitigation, adaptation and loss and damage for developing countries. He said the Philippines has always believed in the indivisibility and interdependence of all human rights, as demonstrated by climate change and its adverse and compounding impacts. On the issue of the safety of human rights defenders and journalists, Rimulia said the Philippines remains a vibrant democracy where freedom of expression and the right to peaceful assembly are protected. He also said the country is determined to end the insurgency problem by addressing its root causes through good governance, the rule of law, social justice and the quest for lasting peace. Agri-Partalist Representative Wilbert Lee urges the Department of Agriculture to strengthen its climate resilient practices to boost the country's self-sufficiency programs. Lee said that while the country had already made inroads in the adoption of climate resilient agriculture, strengthening programs is still needed to achieve food security. He noted the need to address the low uptake due to poor availability access to improve seed and insufficient financial resources to cover investment. He said building the resilience of agriculture and fisheries communities to climate change is crucial in achieving natural food security. He added that the country may lose about 26 billion pesos per year by 2050 due to climate change, according to the DA report. The 2021 Global Climate Risk Index report of the German Watch Institute also showed that the Philippines is the fourth most affected country for two decades from 2000 to 2019. College students may no longer take full online classes starting the second semester of the school year 2022 to 2023. This as the Commission on Higher Education ordered higher education institutions to fully implement on-site or hybrid learning mode. Schools that plan to implement hybrid learning must have face-to-face -face sessions for 50% of the program. Meanwhile, the National Service Training Program should be conducted mostly on-site. Laboratories shall also be held in person along with the on-the-job training and apprenticeship programs. Chad urged colleges and universities to adopt the guidelines in transitioning towards classroom-based learning. The SIM Registration Act is expected to be implemented as early as December 27 this year in an aim to prevent the spread of mobile phone-aided crimes such as scams. Senator Grace Bo said the Department of Information and Communications Technology will release the implementing rules and regulations of the law on December 12, which will then take effect 15 days later. Before that, there will be a public hearing on the implementation of the law on December 5. Under the SIM Registration Act, mobile phone users can use new SIM cards after registering their information. Existing SIM card users must register within 180 days. That's the latest and the biggest stories from the PNA Newsroom. For more news content, visit our webpage or head on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. We're also shown on the social media pages of the Office of the Press Secretary and Radio Pilipinas RP1. Stay tuned for more news updates. I'm Stephanie Civiliano with tell stories that inspire change.